cars and thieves. Play your cards and fire your cannons. Sailing the seven seas. Fire cannons! It's a hit. Thirty days and seven seas. Advance towards Barnacle Harbor and collect your booty. Come along in search of some booty. Just make sure you have the right keys. There's a murmur. Oh, what a beauty! Sailing the seven seas. Play thirty days and seven seas. Available for sale on your mobile device. Message and data rates may apply. Must be eighteen years or older or have permission from a parent or guardian. 30 days and 7 seas, more like 5 hours and 7 seas. The game is relatively short but it does not fail to amaze me. To be honest, I really didn't know that the game was referenced by the show on Cartoon Network named Clarence. Even with the limited knowledge of the show, this game got my attention and got me hooked up. I managed to finish this game in 5 hours. So let's discuss the storyline. Jeff, Sumo, and Clarence are playing a board game. They only have one goal, to get the Kraken's treasure. In order to do that, they have to travel the Seven Seas and explore the secrets. But seriously, the kids are just playing a board game and it was just their imagination that they are fighting some sort of enemies. 30 Days and Seven Seas is a strategy, RPG, hybrid board and card game. You only have three characters in the game. Sumo, Chef, and Clarence. Each one has different skills and can be upgraded as you progress through the game. Collect or buy cards to help you on your enemies or to avoid sharks. Each turn you have to roll the dice and whatever the result on the dice, your ship will move on a designated location. You don't have any control on it. If you land on a blank space, you get a card. The choice of card is random. Sometimes you will get an event card, a movement card, that will help you in most cases. Graphics are fair, but I couldn't say that I am amazed. Graphics are cartoonish as a reference to the show. There are only limited models of enemies. You'll quickly be bored on the same enemies you've encountered. Pirates, ghosts, thieves, and some other enemies that really look the same. The sound of the game is not engaging enough. Even the voiceover narrations. There are also characters such as Lady Redbeard, which didn't make sense. Your characters talk to the bosses like they are also human, but during cutscenes, there are only Clarence, Jeff, and Sumo, and some other monkey looking guy. There are also times that the game will be cut off due to Clarence or Sumo interrupting the game, which I think the developers put in just to make the game longer. I guess you could say that I'm not a fan of Clarence, so I don't know how the show was. But the lines were ugly, they are not even funny. You have minimal control over the game. Touch the screen to roll the dice. If you land on a shark or enemies, you'll be prompted to use a card, if you have one. You cannot use the card before throwing the dice. You also can't see the whole map. You only have one chance in seeing the whole map at the start of the game. On the battle scene, you'll have control over the three characters. Each one has a specific skill to use. Clarence is more of like a healer or a cook. Jeff is a captain and mostly focus on close combat. Sumo is your cannon man. You will roll the dice before you can move your character and based on the number of the dice, you can perform repeated attack. But mostly their attack can be used once per turn, but they have numbers of attacks. Wait a second, let me see that. Clarence, you can't add your own drawings. Now this card is all messed up. Ah, it's just that dumb alphabet card. That one's lame anyway. You mean the card that lets you rearrange all the other cards in alphabetical order? That's And now it's my favorite too. Look, it's got a little cool mermaid on there, just like on the box. But you can't alter cards like that, it's not allowed. But Jeff, 